Hello and welcome to Mint's weekly corporate roundup. Uh, this week saw some major announcement from the regulators of uh, in India, and we saw the Supreme Court uh, deem around 241 coal blocks uh, which they had allot- uh, allotted uh, as illegal. Uh, as a result, a lot of uh, metals and power companies are going to face uh, difficulties in the future. And we have uh, Joel Ribello with us, who will tell us about the funding difficulties. Uh, so, Joel, uh, what are the banks saying? Uh, will it be difficult for these companies? Yeah, thanks, Madhura. You know, uh, there are two, three aspects to this uh, one is this this order was long awaited you know we were all waiting for this supreme court last time said de- delayed it and said you know it will pronounce a judgment later now it's all done uh, what will happen is these blocks were their own coal blocks now they'll have to rebid for it uh, and in the interim they'll have to probably buy coal from the market what it means is the market price is probably four times higher than what they were getting from their home coal blocks uh that will then their profitability of course the cost will go up profitability will hitting profitability would mean that the rating will be impacted and hit on ratings would be mean that the funding cost will be so it's a double whammy for them they are not earning much and they have to pay more for the interest rates uh what it means further on is these blocks again will be again going in auction uh they'll have to arrange for funds for these blocks arrange for funds at a higher rate it remains to be seen of how many companies actually go in and rebid it depends on where they are and what their plans are uh, one other aspects on all this is the impact on banks lots of banks had given thousands of crores to these companies to because these were probably some of them operational blocks some of these companies were planning to start these blocks uh, to to make coal um, to make steel or uh, you know for power production uh these loans probably could now become bad uh, there's a big impact on the banking sector so uh, right now it's a, it's a state of flux but the news is not good uh, news is not good for the companies for banks or or for the economy as such so that's why we have seen all the blood bath in the market that happened today thanks joel uh, so looks like the time is going to be tough for these uh, metal companies uh, this week also saw some major drama unfolding in the zuari and mangalore chemicals uh, deal and we have a pr sanjay with us uh, sanjay tell our readers what happened and what's next so in this case uh, uh, two companies one is uh, zuari led consortium which is uh, controlled by Sar- saroj kumar podar uh, and deepak fertilizers pune based fertilizer company are vying for a controlling stake in mangalore uh, chemicals which is controlled by which is uh, promoted by vijay malya uh, so now the open offer is on where uh, sebi uh, the capital market uh, regulator had enabled or ensured that the open offer is happening at the same time so the last day to revise the price upwards was on thursday and uh, deepak has come up with a, an attractive price around uh, 93.60 per share while uh, you know saroj kumar podar uh, suvari and uh, ub affiliate groups have come up with 81.50 uh, uh, per share so now it's very interesting because the price is in, uh, you know very attractive in terms of uh, you know deepak but uh, zuari and led uh, you know up affiliates hold around 38% stake so if deepak fails to get entire 26% st- uh, share holding through this open offer it will be meaningless because it will be a fractured ma- mandate like uh, you know what we call in a uh, general election kind of stuff so it's very interesting to watch out what is how things are going to be panning out during the open offer so which will be very cr- uh, crucial uh, for vijay malya whether we will we'll understand whether uh, podar is uh, like a friend for malya whether we'll actually lose out in this game or whether uh, shailesh mehta's company that is deepak uh, fertilizers will get a new company into their fold Thanks, Sanjay. Uh, moving on to the telecom sector, uh, this week saw Mukesh Ambani's uh, Reliance Jio uh, ramp up its uh, strategy uh, for rolling out the 4G services uh, sometime around next year. And we have uh, Beryl with us. Uh, Beryl, there were two important uh, piece of news that happened this week. Can you tell our readers what happened? Yeah. So um, Reliance Jio signed uh, two tower deals uh, this week with uh, GTL as well as. Uh, Indus Towers which is the largest tower uh, company in India now this makes it the eighth tower deal that Reliance Jio has signed in the past it signed uh, deals with uh, companies like Ascent Telecom Tower Vision ATC uh, Bharti Airtel uh, and uh, Reliance Communications another uh, interesting uh, news point was uh, yesterday Reliance Jio also got uh, 750 million dollars in funding from Korea Exim Bank with which uh, it plans to use for uh, buying out infrastructure for its 4G rollout from companies like Samsung etc so um 
all this uh, just goes to show that uh, the 4G rollout is fi finally gathering pace after a long delay for Reliance Geo and uh, according to the company's annual report uh, they plan to roll out 4G services in the in 900 cities and towns uh, say by mid next year thanks beril uh, that was all from the corporate bureau this week uh, please visit www.livemin.com for more such updates